Hi, I'm Stu Williamson, and this is the Characteristics of Life. In this video, I'm going to discuss the six characteristics of life that all living things do. Um, while you're watching this video, I would suggest you take some notes. Uh, write down, remember, not just what's on the screen, but also uh, the notes that, that uh, from what I'm saying. Put them two together, analyze it, um, process it synthesize your own thoughts and put it in your own words into onto the under your notes um, this is part of what will be on the test and you're responsible for um, the characteristics of life are the six things that all living things uh, do it's if if it's alive if you we consider it a living organism it will do all six of the following things that i discuss um, so so if it doesn't do one of those things it's not considered alive and i'll talk about that more at the end so let's get started First one, all living things are organized. Whether we're talking about like red blood cells here, which is just a representative cell, um, but they have a, a cellular, usually a cellular organization. All, all organ, living organisms are made of at least one cell. Um, they can be multicellular, like the human body or, or animals or plants, uh, or they can be singular like uh, protozoans and things like that. But they all have at least one cell. And each one of those cells is actually they're, they're going down in levels. Um, we have like DNA, the the, the organization of DNA. Um, all living things actually have DNA or a f similar form of, of nucleic acid like RNA. Um, it's it's the genetic code. Uh, if you think about the themes of biology, um, the themes of biology talk about. Um, uh, levels of organization going all the way from a atomic uh, structure all the way up through molecules and uh, uh, biochemicals, organelle cells, tissues, um, organs, organ systems, uh, organisms, the, the populations, the ecosystems, and the biosphere. Um, they, they, we, that's one of the, the type of things we're talking about here. And the other one's kind of like the heredity, um, the, the sharing of genetic information, uh, unity and diversity. All living things are, have DNA, and yet all living things are different because of that DNA. But all living things are organized. All living things reproduce. Um, they don't need to reproduce for individuals. For instance, there are individuals who are unable to reproduce either because of uh, a genetic defect or, or some other uh, disease or something like that. That does not make them not living because the species reproduces. What we're really talking about here is a species of organisms can reproduce. So while one individual may not be able to reproduce, the species, all the, the most of the organisms in a species can reproduce. They can pass the genetic trait on. They can pass the G DNA on, um, and therefore pass on their adaptations and things. So all living things show reproduction. There are two types of reproduction. The first one is sexual. Um, sexual reproduction is uh, reproduction between two organisms, two of the same species. There's an exchange of genetic information. For instance, in man and woman, sperm uh, and egg. Uh, in plants, there's pollen and egg. Matter of fact, pollen would be considered the, the male part of the, the plant. Um, but sexual reproduction requires two individuals um, to share the genetic information. And then there's asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is reproduction where only there's one, only one individual. Binary fission, where uh, an organism can split in half. Budding, where one in, organism grows out of another one and then drops off and becomes its own type of, of um, its own organism. And there are a couple other examples. But there's no exchange of genetic information. So if the organism or the species is going to survive in that environment, they have to have all the genetic traits to help them survive in the DNA of that one organism. Whereas with sexual reproduction, there can be an exchange of genetic information, a an exchange of traits that might help the individual, the offspring, actually survive better than the, the, the parental um, units. And therefore, there's, it's, it's to the advantage. But sexual reproduction requires energy. Asexual energy does not require as much energy. So there are trade-offs for both of them. But one of the, living, the, one of the characteristics of life for all living things is that they show reproduction. The third characteristic of life is all living things grow. Now, it could be as simple as the growth of, of, this, of these trees. We, we know how plants grow. Um, they grow up or, or whatever. Or it could be, for instance, the development of an individual. 
Um, you start out as a baby and you continue growing up until you become an adult. And then you kind of stop growing, but you continue to develop. And, and as you get older, you continue to change. You continue to, to undergo, undergo uh, uh, developmental changes. So it's not just a, an increase in size. It's not just that, but it also is a development. Even the trees over here have development. Um, they will grow not only up, but they also grow out and, and they will grow more mature. Um, so some organisms actually show uh, development in a change in sex. There are certain fish that go from um, females to males as they mature. As they get older, they, they stop being female and they change into uh, um, males. That again, it's not growth in size necessarily, it's a, a, a change in the development. So living thing, all living things show the, the characteristic of um, growth, okay? Number four, all living things adapt to their surroundings. Uh, this is called a, a response to stimuli, okay? Um, and, and stimuli, as you can see, is a change in the environment. So in the example down here, what we have is a more light. We have bright light. Well, that's a change in the environment. Your eyes dilate. The, the pupils become constricted. When um, And that's your response. Your response is the, the change in the organism. So... The, the stimuli, the bright light, causes the change in the organism, which is the dilation of the pupils. Likewise, a, a, a stimuli could be the dim light, and the response would be the dilation of the, of the pupils. Um, another one would be, could be considered maybe um, a, a, if you touch a hot stove or a hot uh, pan. That's a, it's a, you don't think, oh my goodness, that's really hot, and I pull your hand away. That's, that's an immediate reaction that goes through your nervous system, um, and, and you pull your hand away. It's a response to stimuli, the stimuli being the extremely hot pan or whatever, and your, stim, your response being the, the pulling your hand away. But all living things respond to stimuli. It could be a sound. Um, that's that, uh, a response to stimuli. You hear something, you, you listen to it, and you, you hear what it is. Basically, your five senses are response to stimuli. There's a change in the environment, and your senses, one of the five, touch, taste, uh, sight, hearing, and smell, you, you respond to that. You, you get a signal in your brain saying something is going on in the environment, and you respond to it. It could also be um, a, 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 some other kind of, of response that you may not, a pheromonal response, uh, something you may not smell, but you do respond to. Uh, other organisms that, uh, have responses that things we don't are not aware of and, and respond to it. But as long as the environment changes and the organisms uh, can respond to it, can change to that, that would be a response to stimuli. Uh, plants might show it because they will follow the sun. The, the, the flowers of like a sunflower will actually point to the sun. That's the response to stimuli. The, the, the stimuli is the changing position of the sun. The response is the plant twisting its, its flower towards it. Number five is all living things adapt and evolve. Here you can see a, a walking stick. It's, a, it's an insect that has adapted to look similar to a stick or a twig. Um, that's an adaptation. This is a response to stimuli is a quick response. This is a slow response, as it says over here. This is an adaptation that over time is passed on from organism to organism, uh, parents to offspring. Um, little minute changes that will add up to an adaptation and, and traits that allow the organism to survive. Uh, bears um, growing a hibernation, that's an adaptation, that's a behavioral adaptation. Um, you could have um, the coloring of certain organisms, of, of fish or of a, 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 some sort of wildlife that actually change to blend in and, and camouflage themselves a little better. That's an adaptation. And then they're continually changing. Uh, organisms continue to evolve as the, as the uh, uh, environment continues to change around them, um, so do the, the organisms. Uh, with man's effect or, or, uh, on the, the climate or, or climate change, uh, you can expect that some organisms, some organisms will not adapt, and they will, they will become extinct. And yet, some organisms will do much better and, uh, and expand their their range of, of life uh, because they are able to adapt to the changing environment better than the ones that that went extinct. But all living things uh, adapt and evolve. All living things use energy. 
Um, energy is used for growth. We talked about growth. We, energy is used for reproduction. Energy is used for uh, just living. Uh, just, just sitting here watching this video requires energy. Um, and as you can see, as it says, uh, it's used for growth and it's for use for surviving. Um, we need to survive uh, in the environment and we use energy to do it. Now, the thing is that not all energy is passed on from an insect has eaten some of the plants that it ate and, and it's outside in your, in your garden and, and a bird comes along and eats it. All the, the energy that that, that or, uh, insect ate of the plant is not passed on to the bird. Some of that energy is used just to keep the insect alive. The bird is only going to get the energy that is stored in the body, in the chemistry of the insect. Um, so, so you're not passing on all of the, in, the energy, or, or all, any organism, not pass on all the energy to the next level upon uh, death or consumption or whatever, but it does need energy to survive. It needs the energy to keep itself alive, to, to change, to adapt, to reproduce, um, to all, do all those other things. All those things require energy, and that's uh, one of the characters. If it doesn't use energy, it isn't alive. Those are the six characteristics of life. Uh, some people say they're seventh. They, they will say that they, they produce waste and they breathe. Um, I can think of some organisms that don't really breathe. They do have respiration. That is the use of energy. We'll talk about that in the uh, fourth unit. Um, but, and, and I'm not sure all organisms produce waste. I think that's also a, a, a part of using energy, of getting energy, whether it's from sunlight or from um, uh, if you're an, uh, a heterotroph where you have to go out and actually get something to eat like we do, we eat our food, we produce waste. Plants don't eat food. They use sunlight to make uh, to get energy, but they do produce waste. They produce oxygen, which we use in, in breathing. Um, but all organisms do those six things. They all have the characteristics of life. So you can look at any anything in the world and say, does it do those six things? If it does those six things, it can be considered alive. If it is missing any one of them, doesn't matter what it's one it is, if it's missing any one of those six, it would not be considered alive. One other thing you need to be aware of, and that is the difference between uh, non-living and dead. Okay, dead is death, or a dead organism is an organism that was alive and is no longer alive. All right, um, a non-living organism would be like your computer. That is a non-living organism. It never has any of the characters. It doesn't reproduce. It doesn't. It does use energy. It doesn't uh, um, adapt. It doesn't uh, grow or you know or anything like that. Um, so it's it's not considered it's not considered non-living. Whereas um, your dead goldfish you, that that was alive. It did all six things, and now it no longer does one of those or any of those. And it it's it's no, still non-living, but it was living. So you have to make sure you understand that a non-living thing, a dead thing, did those things and no longer does, and that's why it's considered dead. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me during class. Um, make sure that you take uh, uh, a moment to review your notes. If you have any questions, take a look at the, the book and see if there's a, a, it can help you. Um, and I hope you're studying for the preparing for the test, which is coming up. Good luck. Uh, if you have any questions again, make sure you ask me in class.